We thank you for being patient and understanding and following the COVID-19 guidelines as we look forward to moving back into the church on Holy Thursday. Please remember that we still need to follow certain COVID-19 protocols. To maximize the number of people at every service, we ask that you continue to work with the ushers when being seated. The front pews will be filled first, and the ushers will seat you according to the size of your group and the space available. The restrictions have been difficult for everyone, but your safety is our top priority. Thank you for your continued cooperation. A big shout out to Dick Pyle for his unlimited support for making our remodeled church ready for our Easter celebration. This Lenten season, we ask that we focus on helping the people in need through Rice Bowl. We would like to ask that you bring your Rice Bowl donation by Holy Thursday and drop it in the North X when you come in. Many thanks to those who supported our Lenten food drive and brought donations for St. Vincent de Paul and at Next Step Pregnancy Services. Your generosity will go a long way in making a difference in the lives of our less neighbor. Blessings and congratulations to all our second grade students and older parish and school kids along with our RCIA candidates who received their first reconciliation this weekend. Please pray for those children as they continue their preparation for First Holy Communion. This weekend's bulletin is about the Trigium. Please pick up the bulletin to get more information about the special liturgical events. Also, please bring a bell 
at the Holy Thursday and Easter Vigil. Instead of singing with the choir, we will ring our bell during the Gloria. Lastly, today's celebration will be twofold. Father Ukumu will begin the celebration outside with a few ministers. Second, as he enters in the assembly, we encourage you to raise the palms for blessings. And that is everything. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts. Today we gather together to herald with the old church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of, for salvation following his footsteps so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection in his and his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask you to sanctify all the branches that we have today with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palms, branches, and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it as it's written, fear no more, O daughter of Zion. See your king come seated upon an ass called. His disciples did not understand this at first. But when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. So now, my dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds of Jerusalem who accompanied Jesus, let us go forth in peace as we enter our worship place.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we who heed his lesson of penitent suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. They cast lots, but you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise Him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to Him. You who fear the Lord, revere Him. All you descendants of Israel, my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, 
though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord Jesus. Please be seated. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon <clears throat> the le leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard, she broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you'll always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Isarachot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? 
he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. Disciples, the disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, <clears throat> One of the two. One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it's written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if we had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which I'll shed for many. Amen, amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it's written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crawls twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Geshemirn, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray may not go, not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up and go 
See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he felt the cloth behind. He left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the sign of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the, guards, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maid came along, seeing Peter warming himself. She looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the crocked crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? 
See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer. So that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. After he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified, the soldiers led him away inside the palace. That is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufius, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Galothea, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drudged with mirth, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they, sac they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their hands and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, Come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabathani, which is translated, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Here, I'll kneel and pause for a short time.
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the sign of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Madeline, Ma Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Jose and Solomon. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem when it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to, to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in the tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Moses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This happened about two thousand years ago. But when we read the Passion of the Christ, it seems that like it happened just yesterday or last year. Tonight we celebrate the Passion of the Christ as Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem. With the crowds waving palms, spreading their cloth, singing Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David acclaiming him the king and the prince of peace. It was a beautiful welcome to Jesus as he entered the city of Jerusalem. But soon after, we can see uh, from the reading that uh, the celebrations were short-lived because everything turned upside down the palms that they were carrying turned into spears and knives and nails that they used against him, that they used to cross him, to put him to the cross. It was so short-lived. Instead of singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest son of David, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was betrayed by Judas, denied even by Peter three times, his companion, suffered rejection and humiliation. He was falsely accused and justly, inhumanly treated, hence condemned to a slow and a shameful and a painful death. We may want to ask ourselves on these palms, why all this against an innocent person? An innocent person who had come, who had lived among them, who had done a lot of good things to them. Why? Because it had been written. There's no way we can celebrate Easter if we don't celebrate Palm Sunday or Good Friday. That's why he went through all this. Why? 
out of love for humanity, out of love for you and I, out of love for people of God. He went through this so that he may rescue us from the darkness of this world into the wonderful light that he brings, that he shall bring to the world. You can see even in the gospel that we just read, him coming to Peter and saying, pray, Peter, that you may not be put into temptation. I think if he came to us here, he would tell us the same. Have faith, be strong, be convinced, pray that you may not be put into temptation. A person who is a follower of Christ, a person who is called a Christian, who doesn't pray, may meet with a lot of temptations and maybe even go to the point of denying the son of the living God. So my brothers and sisters, on this passion of the Lord, it's a time we want to come back to ourselves and think of those moments that we have denied Jesus. Think of those moments that we have participated in saying crucify him, crucify him. In those moments that we have left him, the light of the world, and walked in the darkness. Jesus also does something very interesting as he goes through his agony. We'll see even in other gospels, he demonstrates an act of mercy, of forgiveness to his executioners, saying, God, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. If we can always look at God and say to God, God, forgive my brother, forgive my sister, forgive my wife, forgive my husband, forgive somebody who has done or said something against you, you'll be acting as Jesus acted, forgiving as he forgave, loving as he loved. So, these are the moments, these are the days, as we enter this holy week, that we may want to be as holy as our God is holy himself. We may want to follow the stations of the cross. We may want as those women of Jerusalem. And now we see Mary Madeline and um, the Ma Salome, the mother of Jose, and other women have followed him up to the cross. How about you and I? The cross is always around us. Let us follow him to the cross, be crucified with him, die with him, and he will give us a gift. When he resurrects, we shall come up with him and gain a new life in him. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. At the words that follow, he became man. For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered dead and was buried, and, and rose again on the third day, day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. We are spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have set out with Jesus on the journey that leads to Easter. In confidence, let us now put our prayers before our loving God. For the church, that we may recognize on the poor and suffering of the world, the face of Christ, her crucified Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our candidates preparing at the Easter Vigil, that they may open their hearts to receive Christ's gift of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish community, that the coming celebration of the sacred Paschal Tridium of the Lord may open us up to the mystery of Christ's love and unite us in love with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our community, that they may find strength and courage in the cross of Christ and discover redemptive value of their suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the innocent victims, their families and loved ones in the recent shootings in Georgia and Colorado, may the Lord, who himself is peace, send them his Holy Spirit of charity and nonviolence to nurture his peace among them and among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us, marked, marked with the sign of faith, especially Shirley Anderson and Arnold Hoppenstead, brother of Dennis Hoppenstead, that the power and wisdom of God may bring them to their eternal home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Lord, accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. 
for our good and the good of all his church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give them the Lord our God. It is right and just. A story right and just and our duty and our salvation always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, holy, almighty, and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation <coughs> to save the guilty of the world. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in a joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the child, once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many <coughs> for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. This God, we proclaim your death till you come in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, <coughs> our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Bishop Daniel and Eusebio, and all your people everywhere. Remember also 
our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us, Lord, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, all the apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this us day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your Paul, you are saying to us now, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, the body and blood of Christ give us peace for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to the hope for what we believe in, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call us to be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated for a moment. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you most sincerely for, for, for coming tonight as we kick off, uh, start the Holy Week. And uh, in so saying, I would like to uh, let you know we had in the announcements already that um, effect from uh, this coming Thursday for Holy Thursday celebrations, we shall be back to our new, newly remodeled worship place. So um, uh, we'll have a little bit more people coming. So you just follow and wait for uh, the, the parish will uh, update you on what's happening and uh, about how the Easter celebrations will be. But um, those who will come for Holy Thursday Mass in the evening, it will be at 7, right? At 7. Uh, if you come here, you will not find Father Okum here. You come, if you are planning on coming, come to the um, uh, main church. I would like to say a big thank you to, to, to you all for your pa patience as we have been doing this for almost uh, seven months. And um, it has not been easy for most of us, even me, it has not been easy because I had to add a mass. But um, God is good all the time. And because all the time God is good, we have come almost to the end, almost 96, 98% complete. There will be a few things that we have not done, but those can be done when we are over there. And uh, I would like uh, to thank the staff members who have been helping and uh, being there for us as we have been working so hard. And in a very special way, thank Dick Pyle, who since for the last seven months, he has been on this campus more than I have to make sure that things are running very well. So I want to say thank you for good work. We cannot pay you enough. We cannot uh, do anything, but uh, God will reward you abundantly. Uh, while here and also in the kingdom of heaven for having really uh, been here to help in the remodeling of that church. And then uh, uh, on Friday, I encourage all of you, if you can um, do two things, if you can wear your red, everything red, try to be liturgically correct on Friday, Good Friday, and then also I ask you all who took the rice balls the boxes for the rice balls, please return them on Good Friday, this coming Friday. So I'll see you soon, and uh, God bless you, and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful Holy Week this year. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good? All the time. All the time? Yes. And that's his nature. Wow. <laughs> please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Father Son, Son, and, and the Holy, Holy spirit. spirit. Amen. We go forth in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by our life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a good evening. It is now time for the extraordinary ministers of the Holy Communion to come up to distribute communion. The ushers will guide you to your line. Please maintain social distance. If you are not receiving communion, please cross your arms on your chest and line up to receive bless a blessing from the extraordinary ministers of the communion and then leave. For our parishioners who are unable to receive the communion, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just since you 